Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report and coming up here on today's show, I'm going to go through all 14 players on the Raiders practice squad, which means there are still two open spots available. At the end of today's show, I'm going to tell you some Raiders news around Darren Waller. We're also going to talk about Thayer Munford. Now, some of you are like, wait a minute, Mitch. What's all this white space back here? Well, you know how I always tell y'all, more subs equals more videos and all the super chats? It goes to being able to create more studios. And as you can see right now, we got a white wall. I got to turn this thing into a green screen. So shout out to everyone who supports the show because this is a good sign. This means more studios around chat sports and more Raiders Report content. So again, y'all, NFL is going to allow up to 16 players on each team's practice squad. And for anybody out there that's ever curious about some of these practice squad rules, this is a really important video because I have a lot of information to be able to break down. So for practice squad, you can elevate, be elevated for game day three times in the season. After that, you can't be elevated anymore or a team has to actually put you on the active roster. Before I break down all these players that the Raiders kept, remember, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because if breaking news happens, I'm going live. If big time news happens, I'm going live. Rumors, watch parties the entire season here on the Raiders Report. If you're a diehard Raiders fan, this is the number one place that you need to be. So oftentimes people are like, all right, dude, what are all these practice squad rules? Because they have recently changed since 2020. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to roll through all of the practice squad news, notes, rules, everything that I personally think Raider Nation needs to know. And then I'm going to tell you which players actually made the practice squad, give you some analysis on each of them, tell you who I like the most, tell you why I think the Raiders ended up keeping them, and well, obviously I'm going to ask you who you guys like as well. All right, so let's start going through here some of these practice squad rules ultimately. Players with no NFL experience, zero cured seasons, players who are active for fewer than nine games during their only cured season, up to 10 players may have been or may have no more than two cured seasons, and up to six players may be signed without any limitation on earned seasons. Now, those rules are in terms of which players can be a part of your practice squad and how many guys you can keep. It is important to note, you do have a limit of 10 players with more than two accured seasons, include six players with no limits. So hopefully that all makes sense. Again, if you have any other questions about this, you can always hit me up on IG or Twitter, Mitchell Rent 365 For younger practice squad players, uh, they are set to make $11,500 a week this year, while players with over two years of experience in the league will have a weekly salary of 15400 That equates to 207000 or $277,200 for an 18-week regular season. That salary is not guaranteed, meaning a practice squad player can be released at any time, and the salary does not count against a team's salary cap. Well, what about for vet minimum salary? It's that one set at fifteen thousand four hundred, which again is twenty or two hundred and seventy-seven thousand two hundred. But then you can actually make up to nineteen thousand nine hundred a week, which goes all the way up to three hundred and fifty-eight thousand two hundred. And just like all the other players, the salary is not guaranteed, which means you know you can uh, move on from it. In terms of poaching, and what does poaching mean? You can remember steal players from practice squads. Teams are allowed to poach players off another team's practice squad if they are signing them to the active roster. A team can sign a player from their next upcoming opponent practice squad, but it must be done six days before the game or 10 days if it is during the bye week. Teams can also protect up to four players on their practice squad to prevent them from being poached, though that goes into effect on Tuesday each week, so a player a team wants to protect could still get signed by another team on Monday. I know, a lot of stuff to be able to break down, but if you want, I often like to make these quote graphics here to help you illustrate either what somebody says or to just help you illustrate a lot of these rules. If you want to take screenshots of all those, believe me, I do not blame you whatsoever. Coming up now here on the Raiders Report, we're going to get into players who made the practice squad, and the order that this is going to go in is the order of when I was told they were going to make the practice squad. First player coming up here is Bam Oliseni. Big old long arm, six foot seven, 339 pound out of Utah. Very raw prospect, was a UDFA in 2022. Longest wingspan at seven feet, three inches. That's like NBA level of wingspan. And I really can't wait to see what Carmen Rosillo can do with this young man. Let's go to Zach Van Valkenburg. This is another UDFA. 
had some good opportunities. I always like to say that he kind of reminds me of a less athletic version of Max Crosby. Does not give up on any plays whatsoever, but it's interesting to see where he's going to end up this year. Next player coming on here is Dylan Stoner. He was a 2021 UDFA out of Oklahoma State. Didn't get a chance to play last season, and judging by his picture and that mustache, it's definitely fitting with that last name. Let's go to Bryce Cosby. Probably out of all the practice squad players, this is the guy that I have the highest hopes for in terms of being a UDFA. I've seen some good flashes from him. I know the coaching staff likes him a lot. This could be a name to definitely keep on your radar. Quarterback time, Chase Garvers. The Raiders kept Derek Carr. The Raiders kept Jarrett Stidham. Those are going to be the only two dudes on your active roster, but you need somebody who can operate in terms of your practice squad. So for that reason, Chase Garvers makes the list. Curtis Bolton, this was a player that I was actually really excited to see. Three tackles last season with the Detroit Lions. And when he came out of Oklahoma, he is more of just a run stopper. The safety that the Raiders got in the preseason was due to pressure by Bolton. Struggled a little bit in terms of coverage, but I was happy that the Raiders kept him. Jordan Meredith, next up here on the list. Remember, Meredith, kind of a cool story for him. He was released already this offseason. The Raiders brought him back, and now he ends up making the practice squad. Has some versatility, a UDFA in 2021. Played with the Chicago Bears a little bit last season. I think because of those connections with Champ Kelly and the Raiders just needing depth on the offensive line is why the Raiders kept Meredith. Cole Fotheringham with Jesper Horstead. Foss Moreau, Darren Waller being the only Raiders right now on the active roster. That's probably the biggest reason why they kept Cole. Nick Bowers, he actually signed with the Cincinnati Bengals today on their practice squad. And then Jacob Hollister, he has been put on IR. We got more names to get into, but remember, y'all, I can't turn on the lights around here if it wasn't for our awesome sponsors. So major shout out to BetUS. If you want to get the best deal on the internet, that is in terms of if you're looking to make some bets on sports, go to chatsports.com slash Raiders, like the link that you see below. To get that 125% deposit bonus, you got to use promo code Raiders125. What does that mean? If you put down $100, you get $125 for free to bet with. So, I said it earlier, does anybody think that the Raiders are going to lose to the Chargers? I don't think so. If you're so confident that the Raiders not only beat them, that you also think it's going to be a high-scoring game, maybe think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I'm betting the over... And I'm betting the Raiders to win this game. Put your money where your mouth is. Where? At chatsports.com slash Raiders. Promo code Raiders125. Now let's go to Isaiah Zuber, who kind of a cool story for him. USFL touchdown leader in terms of receptions. I was happy that the Raiders kept him. He also had an interception on the defensive side of the football. Very, very intriguing prospect in terms of a wide receiver. Probably one of my favorite names to say is Myron Tagovailoa Omosa. He plays a little bit of defensive tackle. The Raiders have lined him up at D.E., is undersized in terms of being a defensive tackle. Doesn't quite have the lateral quickness, though, to be a defensive end, but is an interesting prospect. I did think that he was going to be a player that had a chance to get drafted. So overall, man, pretty, pretty happy that the Raiders kept him. So remember, the Raiders are allowed to keep 10 players under two accured seasons. So those were those 10 players. Which players with two seasons or less is your favorite? So out of all those practice squad guys that I just broke down, please let me know down in the comments section which one is your favorite. Let's all go to the players that have played in the league for two or more years. First name up here is Austin Walter. Number 32, kind of a quick twitchy little back. Reminds me of a lesser version of an Amir Abdullah. Had some good spurts, I thought, in the preseason. Showed some good ability to be able to run between the tackles last year. 26 carries, 101 yards, and a touchdown. Let's go to the next name here. It's Ike Brown. Probably one of my favorite games that I saw from Brown was in the, I don't know if it was against the Patriots game or against the Dolphins game. They're all kind of blending together. But this was a dude that was targeted four times, had three pass breakups. I know I've been told that the Raiders like him, but he was a UDFA in 2020. Ronis Grasu, next name coming up here. He's going to be the backup center to Andre James. Does give you some ability here and there, but again, simply just a backup at this point. And then the final name was Matthias Farley, and probably out of all the practice squad players, Farley might be one of the guys that gets called up the quickest because I think before his injury happened, he might have had the best chance of making the 53. So when you think about, all right, why do the Raiders keep Paul Mayo? Maybe it's because Farley was battling a few injuries here and there. So out of those veterans that made the practice squad, and again, air quotes here, veterans, which one was your favorite? Mine was Matthias Farley, but from the list from before, I'd probably go with Bryce Cosby. 
though I am also very intrigued by Isaiah Zuber. So let's go through these one more time here, the practice squad players, and then we will get into the injury news as promised. As you can see, Bam Olesi, Zach Van Valkenburg, Dylan Stoner, Bryce Cosby, Chase Garbers, Curtis Bolton, Jordan Meredith, Cole Fotheringham, Isaiah Zuber, Myron Tagovailoa Mosa. If anybody wants to take screenshots of this list or if you want to take a screenshot of this list as well, you can do so. Austin Walter, Ike Brown, Matthias Farley, Ronos Grasso, and the Raiders can still add two more players to that practice squad, so please keep that in mind. Before I go, y'all, I wanted to keep you guys up to date, so not only did Darren Waller hire a brand new agent, which I talked about in my video earlier today, he was also out there practicing. I will admit, I know that Waller has always done right by the Raiders, but it was kind of weird. It's like, all right, you hire a brand new agent amongst your contract talks, and now all of a sudden you can go out there and practice, which I get it. He's trying to get the bag. He's trying to be the highest paid tight end. I don't totally blame him, but it does make me wonder is like, could you actually have gone out there and practice before? Are all these injury things, were they legit or were they not legit? I guess we might never know, but it does sound like he's going to be on track to play week one. Another reason to put money on him over at BetUS, chatsports.com slash Raiders. And then the final thing we'll talk about here is Thayer Munford with the Raiders moving on from Alex Leatherwood, with the Raiders putting Brandon Parker on IR. I would say right now it is a two-team or two-player race between Thayer Munford and also... You got uh, Jermaine Illuminor battling it out there for that right tackle spot. When we wrap up today's show, I had a lot of people ask me, okay, Mitch, do you have any other information in terms of things that we could potentially be looking at? So I was talking about Tyree Phillips earlier on Twitter. His agent actually reached out to me today and said, hey, we would love to be able to come to the Raiders. We've had some good time being out there in Las Vegas. In terms of what you can expect from him, if you're looking at overall players, overall production, he can play offensive guard. He can play right tackle. He actually lined up in 2021 347 times at right tackle, 42 times at left tackle. In 2020, 296 times at right guard, 122 snaps at right tackle. He is, I think, an upgrade compared to some of the players what we have, a third-round pick in 2020. But Baltimore has a brand-new regime, and they wanted to move on from him. Also... I was told per source that there is interest in Tyree Phillips from an AFC West team. I can't reveal which AFC West team that is, but if you guys want to stay in the know, I would love for the Raiders to add Tyree Phillips. And if that happens, remember, we're going to be making a video about it, so hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and if anything else happens around the silver and black, you know guys know where to come. Raiders report.